Tyler, thank you for the time. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? We're great, buddy. Appreciate the time, man. So you those external grades are for you know schlubs like Grant and I to kind of try to figure out and quantify what our eyes are seeing. How would you grade so far what you and this O-line have done through four weeks? We feel like it's pretty damn good. Yeah, no, I mean, I think we've, we've done some uh, pretty good stuff uh, up to this point. I think, that, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot, lots of work on it. I think, uh, you know, that that's just the standard that we hold ourselves at. And, and you know, we, we, we have some stuff to clean up and even even be better. So I think, um, you know, it's the point of that. I think we're, we're doing a pretty good job so far. But, you know, there's obviously a huge, huge uh, growth that we can get to. Tyler, from you at center over to your right with Cosme and Wiley, I mean, you guys have pretty much been on the field for every single snap. Obviously, Nick Allegretti has been a mainstay, but missed a few snaps at the end of the game. But you guys are now basically 50-50 rotating at left tackle, which is fairly uncommon, and it doesn't seem like missing a beat. Coleman's been awesome. Lucas has played pretty well. First of all, how abnormal is that, just based on your experience college in the NFL, to have like a platoon at left tackle, so to speak? And what do you make of how those guys have played? Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think the the biggest thing um, in my experience, you know, there's definitely been some rotations um, in in my career uh, so far. But at the same time, you know, we've we've handled that through OTAs, we've handled that through um, camp, and we we then um, have have we do now um, with uh, BC and uh, Lucas. So I think uh, you know they've done a great job of. You know, just helping each other out, seeing what they're seeing on the field and when they're in, um, they're prepared for that. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, we're just gelling and, and, and we're still, um, you know, early in the season where, you know, that you just got to keep stacking those great opportunities of lessons. And obviously, you know, the biggest ones are whether we win or lost, but just learning from those uh, and having that growth throughout the, 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 preseason, the preseason, but also through the first four games, because that's the most unscouted look you're going to get. Tyler, and Tyler Biotis with us here on GND. We don't know you tremendously well yet. I feel like you're a really nice dude off the field. Are you one of those guys that like all of a sudden becomes like mean and a menace when the whistle blows, or are you like always nice, kind of like laughing and smiling while you're knocking guys into the dirt? Like, are you a are you a trash talker? Do you get mean? Like, does your heart turn dark? Like, tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, I talk a little shit for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I think uh, you know, there's a. There's a different side of me on the field that I am outside. So um, definitely, <laughs> I love definitely that. count on that. <laughs> Tyler Biotish on GND was with the Cowboys the first four years of his career, became a starter about quarter way um, left in the season. In the last three years, a mainstay in Dallas. Dan Quinn loved what he saw, brought him over to D.C., a former pro bowler, anchoring this offensive line up front. Uh, what do you make of the way Jaden Daniels played as the rookie of the month? You know, I think there's, you know, the who he is um, on and off the field and his work ethic um, shows tremendously. I think the way he handles himself and how poised he is um, in any scenario, doesn't matter what the situation is, he's always in the moment. And that's the hugest, I, you know, biggest part I've seen up at this point in the consistency and the growth that he's had since OTAs to camp to preseason one to the first game of the season till now. There's huge growth points of his um, career, even to this point that he's just, you know, taking those steps and he's he's handling success in the right way, and game after game he's learning each and every time. So he's done a great job. Great Tyler Biotish and the Commanders are home against the Browns on Sunday. Tickets are available. You can go to Commanders.com to get your hands on some. Uh, he seems like one of the guys in a way that's hard for a superstar. He was a Heisman Trophy winner, number two overall pick, but he seems like he's able to kind of get along in the locker room with the crew. I saw you guys were sliming him for his Nickelodeon award the other day and having fun. You know, what's his personality like? Yeah, I think I think it kind of goes back to what I said before. He's always in the moment. He's having fun with it too, and he's a competitor. And he's always ha he's always having an edge on um, and how he can get better. Um, but when we're in the moment of whether it be on or off the field, you know, we're having a great time and we're you know, and we haven't had, you know, we've only had since what he's been drafted about a time. So we've had numerous amount of opportunities, whether it be, you know, dinners and hanging out after, or even, you know, having that experience too, uh, with Nickelodeon where he just, uh, he just got, uh, you know, yesterday. So I thought, 
it's just he's he's an in the, in the moment guy, and that's and that's the best part about him is that you know he's continuing to grow each and every day. Tyler, you're obviously new to the team this year, and a couple other guys are as well on that offensive line. How long does it take for you to get comfortable so that it's second nature, where you know intuitively what Sam Cosby is going to do, or Allegretti is going to do, or various tackles, or guys that you're playing with? How long does that comfort and cohesion take to really and truly build where it becomes natural? Yeah, I think I think the biggest part is just making sure that you know we're we're locked in and we're consistent uh, throughout the time we have together, and that goes all the way back from the time we were in with OTAs, and you know we're we're all coming here um, and you know, bringing it every single day and, and showing our personalities, is, you know, to see how each and every piece of the puzzle can fit, right? And um, and how we can gel together. And I think that's a huge part about it is is the biggest thing is having experience with one another. So, and that's, that was, a, you know, DQ had us, you know, playing in the preseason, that's, which was great for us and joint practices that, were, that was great for us to build, not necessarily this culture, this team, but to build with each and every position group and how to, you know, obviously build chemistry and unity within the O-line. And and it, it comes with the experience, whether it be practice, meeting room, and just being in the moment and being consistently, you know, doing what you need to do and how do you want to fit this or how do you want to block this and what's this call and how we're going to react to this and all, all these stunts and everything like that. So, and that's the biggest thing, I think. Tyler, staying out west last week seemed like a big deal to help you guys. You know, basically, you know, not – get too high after what was one of the great wins in recent franchise history, you end up handling your business against Arizona, but now you come home to friends and family in the area. You're you're not basically like locked in the hotel just with your teammates. How do you guys guard against now this week? uh, Maybe going into that Cleveland game, feeling yourselves a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest part about like the travel um, that I thought was great was that you had, uh, you had time to, you know, how we just talked about it and how you got to gel with one another and, and just keep on building and, you know, that brick by brick mentality and, you know, what on a short week, how can we, how can we bet How can we be better? You know, obviously being on the road, you know, going all the way to, you know, a different time zone, all that, all that stuff. And, you know, I thought we, you know, we hit that out of the park and still there's huge growth lessons. I think we, we can build off of, but I think the, the point coming off of a huge win is like that is okay how how good how, how great can we be right so like how can we how can you take the little details and how, how about those plays that maybe you know maybe didn't hit as well as we could and um just those edges that you just want to keep keep on your way to you know chasing success and obviously you know you know being at that attitude level of how great can we be and that's how you know you're just nailing out the details in the meeting room and, and really staying consistent on top of that Tyler Biotish with us here on g and A couple more moments left. Why are there so many ineligible receiver downfield penalties? Like, what what is going on? Did they come warn you guys? And, you mean league-wide? Yeah, like, not just you guys, but everywhere. It's like every other play now. Like, every RPO basically results in it. Like, you guys need a lobbyist to get that out. Like, that's absurd what's happening right now. What's going on? I think that's just the emphasis around the league, I think. You know, every year I would say that there's going to be emphasis um, whether it be new or not necessarily new, but you know, I think that's the how you how 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 great can you be based on officiating throughout each and every year. I think each and every year there's you know some stuff stuff that um, you know the referees or the NFL is is looking for, whether it be um, you know a, you know an illegal formation not being um, you know on the last scrimmage or you know, whether it be um, excessive celebration or wh- wh- whatever the case may be, I think the biggest part to take away from that is like, is how the game's getting called. And, you know, that I think every, you know, ref- referee crew, you, you take that into your study and you take that into how the league is getting called right now. And, and you take that into your prep as well. I think that's a, it's a huge, huge part of the game. Tyler, I know. Do I know he, why. Who knows? I, don't, <laughs> I know he it doesn't line up right across from you, but, We'll, we'll end the conversation here. The Browns are in town Sunday. Miles Garrett is not practicing right now, but assuming he plays, he had two sacks this week. He's got four already through four games. One of the best rushers in the league. Just generally, you know, what kind of test is he? Why is he so good? And, and how do you guys, kind of as a unit collectively, try to slow him down? Yeah, I think you know he's a great player. You know, he's one of the best in the league, and and that and then 
in that, you know, we respect them for that, but also, you know, that's, that's the prep we have to take, take full, full force too. you know, whether he's practicing or not, whether he's playing or not, who, who knows, right? Like, but at the same time, we're, we're prepared for him and we're going to be prepped in the right way as if he's playing and, and he's a, he's a, you know, a bullseye on, on him, on his team that, you know, we, we, we take very consideration of what he's done in the league and maybe previous years and even up to this point, but, but no, we, we prep like he's playing the game. Tyler, really appreciate you joining us, man. Good luck to you. Keep it up, man. It's been a blast to watch you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.